Hal Jordan is back on Earth, having given up being a Green Lantern after a situation. Welcome to the Comic Story and Complete Story series, where we take trade paperbacks in single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. As we discovered last time, Hal has made his own Green Lantern ring that does not abide by the rules held by the rest of the Green Lantern rings. When Razor showed up to try and bring Hal back to save the universe from the United Planets, Hal revealed that he left due to the death of Kilowog. And now, it's time to find out what happened. This was a members video that Benny had recorded a long time ago, and now, everyone gets to enjoy it. This is Green Lantern number seven. Our story begins some time ago on the planet of Oa. The Green Lanterns have gathered to hear from their new leaders, the representatives of the United Planets government. Speak of the devil, Kyle Rayner says as the alien ship lands and Kilowog greets the new leaders who ask that all lanterns assemble in the Great Hall. Well, this is gonna be great. Hal says to Jon Stewart as they all shift into the hall. The United Planets greets them and thanks them for attending. They explain that since the Great Battery was destroyed, the Corps' ranks have thinned. But now that Jon Stewart has created a new battery of pure source energy, they can begin to rebuild. However, the United Planets believe that they should focus their efforts on the areas of the universe where the Corps can do the most good. As such, after the events of yet another crisis emanating from Sector 2814, we hereby declare that the Quadrant quarantined until further notice. Lord Premier Theros states, The Green Lanterns are shocked by this declaration that the Earth has been quarantined, and Hal Jordan steps forward. Our job is to police that sector without us, but Theros holds up a hand. There will be countless other heroes and metas to deal with threats within that region. Hal still objects, noting that the Human Lanterns won't give up protecting their world. And Theros nods, explaining that the Lanterns can resign from the core. But understand, we need veterans, heroes such as you to help us make the universe a safer place. Theros explains, telling them that they need the Veteran Lanterns to train the new core. Another representative holds up a data pad and prepares to offer new assignments. She starts with Guy Gardner, who begins to refuse until he hears what it is. We need you to apprehend the bounty hunter known as Lobo, the representative tells him. Guy pauses for a moment before shrugging. All right, I'm in. He says with a smile, admitting that he's a score to settle with the alien. Next, they both turn to Hal and Kilowog, explaining that they have a special assignment for them as well. A short time later, Hal and Kilowog are looking out through the viewport of their ship. This is not fun. Hal sighs. Kilowog nods in agreement. Not fun at all, Pooza. He admits as they stare down at Kurgar. The pair have been assigned to protect Lord Premier Theros in his peace talks with Sinestro in the hopes of bringing Kuragar into the United Planets. The ship descends over the capital, gliding over the central yellow power battery. Hal glances out the window to see the yellow lanterns escorting them. Why do I get a feeling you're not the welcoming party? Hal ponders, but Kilowog pats his friend on the shoulder. Cool heads, Jordan. Nothing we haven't seen before, Kilowog says quietly. The lanterns walk with Theros as they're led to Sinestro's throne room. From his throne, the ruler smiles down at them. Hello, welcome to my home, Sinestro says to Theros. And shortly after that, the peace talks begin, with Theros offering what the advantages to Kuragar would be if they joined the United Planets. But Sinestro disagrees, believing that bowing to a body of alien worlds with their own interests would only weaken Kuragar. Hal becomes angry during these talks, pointing out that Sinestro has created a fascist state where people are only protected because of their basic freedoms that have been taken away. Theros whirls on his lantern guard. Lantern Jordan, if you cannot contain yourself, return to the ship at once! Theros commands once it becomes apparent that Hal can't control his anger around Sinestro. Hal glares at his old enemy, but the ruler merely smiles at him. Yes, send the boy away. Sinestro says with a wave of his hand, and as Hal walks out, admonishing himself in the process, he passes a trio of aliens that are heading towards the throne room. His eyes widen as the three transform into yellow lanterns, flying up into the throne room. What the hell? Hal whispers. 
Inside of the throne room, Kilowog also notices the lanterns out the window. Sensing an attack, he leaps towards Theros, covering them with a shield construct. Get down! He bellows as the window suddenly shatters inward as a yellow monster attacks. Sinestro is thrown away, seemingly just as surprised as Kilowog. Find Lord Premier Theros and make sure he's dead. One of the yellow lanterns grunts, but the smoke clears to reveal a very angry Kilowog. Hey, poosers! Not on my watch! He bellows. Hal flies back to the throne room, using his ring to call for backup in the process. But Kilowog smashes through the throne room in a full battle against the Yellow Lanterns. Kilowog! Hal says as his friend is slammed into the ground. But Kilowog quickly shakes off the attack. This could be a diversion. I've got these three. Protect Lord Premier Theros! He grunts. Hal flies back into the throne room, quickly retrieving Theros. He streaks back towards the ship. Don't worry, I've got you. Where's Lancer and Kilowog? Theros asks. Taking care of business. Back at the fight, the Yellow Lanterns prepare for another attack. Kill him quickly! Then we go get Lord Premier Theros! The leader growls, but Kilowog holds up his ring, creating a flail and a shield in his hands. Give us your best ragged shot, poosers! He says as he crashes into them. The battle continues, Kilowog swinging his weapon, blocking the Yellow Lantern's attacks with his shield, but they hit him again and again, breaking through his constructs until Kilowog falls to his knees, blood spilling out of several wounds. Hal returns from securing Theros on the ship. He looks down to see one of his oldest friends having fallen, and he speeds up his flight. Stay down! The Yellow Lanterns order Kilowog, but the Bolovaxian shakes his head. I don't know how to stay down, he says with a grunt. And with a bellow of rage, Kilowog charges the lanterns. He continues the fight. Hal gets closer. He can see the yellow battery beginning to glow, and suddenly energy begins to shoot out of it, bathing the city in a yellow light. Back on Earth, Hal finishes telling this story to Razor, who wanted to know why Kilowog wasn't there. I woke up on Oa a few days later. Theros said that Sinestro signed the treaty after swearing he had nothing to do with the attack. Hal continues to explain that he thinks Sinestro signed it after he realized that his hold on the planet was weakening. Kilowog was killed when something caused the yellow battery to flare. It incinerated all of them. I should have been there. I should have had his back. Hal tells him, explaining that he decided to leave the core and return to Earth. Razor looks down at his friend, telling him to have hope. Is that what they're teaching you in Odom, Razor? Hal asks, but Razor closes his eyes in sadness, and he shakes his head. That's actually why I'm here. The power battery on Odom has also been destroyed. And that brings us to the conclusion of The Death of Kilowog, Issue 7 of Green Lantern. I still have another Green Lantern that Benny had pre-recorded to release at a later date, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure those notifications are turned on so you do not miss that. And of course, be sure to like and comment, and we will see you next time. Rest in peace, Benny. We really miss you.